Hi everyone, it's Victoria here and welcome to Black Art History. So today we're going to be going through how to study for an art history exam. I know you're probably in your first part of history class and it's really daunting. All the material, all the imagery, dates, and the artists. So I'm going to be giving you some pro tips on how to get an A on that first exam. So my first pro tip to start off with is breathe. There are some great guides to show you how to conquer the material and get your best grade in art history. So, one, fundamentals guide. You can order these on Amazon or your professor might recommend them as part of the syllabus. This one is by De Oliva and it's the fundamentals of art history. So you're gonna be able to go through this book and start to become familiar with some of the terminology used in the dis discipline. So here you have just some basic glossary terms, chiaroscuro, contrapposto, um, and just some really well-known works of art. Each chapter breaking down how to do a formal analysis or how to critically look at a work. So in this, you can find everything you need to feel comfortable on that first day. Another book I would recommend by Dia Liva um, is a methods guide. So if you're in a more complex class, you're in a theory class, a senior seminar, this book will break down all those complex theories for you so that you can start to understand. It has really great diagrams as well so that you can move stepwise through with the professor as they're working through those more complex parts. Uh, personally, I was a little bit confused when I first started off with art history and theory, so this was a perfect guide to kind of give me that stepwise analysis of a new theory in relation to what I'm studying, which is um, black art history and art of the diaspora. So, next thing. You're probably going to have a textbook. You don't necessarily need to buy your textbook in um, the bookstore or at Amazon. My first tip is to try your library. A lot of people just don't look in the library nowadays, so I would either look in your library and see if you can get an older edition if possible, or try to request it on Borrow Direct or Dart Doc. So that was what my school called it. Um, but you can also use whatever other direct loaning system your school has. So this is just a piece of a textbook. So this is something also you can buy if you don't want to carry around the big thousand page book. They do sell these partial books. So for example, for an intro art history class, I had two books here. Um, and you can work through one as first part of your semester or your quarter and the second book as your second part. So when you're going through the book, you're going to want to be keeping an eye on the images that are mentioned and also how much information is given on each. So if you're seeing that there's a full page devoted to a certain art style or a particular church that you're looking through, you want to, you want to mark that, highlight that, and pull away that good information before even going to class. So when you get to class, you're able to ask your professor and get an idea of how important that information is so that when it comes for the exam, you already are thinking ahead. The last thing you want to do for an art history exam is to cram on the last, in the last minute and the last day because there's no way you're going to be able to memorize all the images and you're not going to understand the material. You want to be studying constantly throughout the class for that great, thorough understanding. So another thing I would recommend is reading along with the syllabus. So your professor is most likely going to outline what are the key works of art either before um, or during the lecture. So you're going to keep, I would say, just a side uh, page of notes on that as you're going along. So that would be bringing into the next section of studying. So figuring out what kind of note taking style works for you. So your class is most likely going to have a mixture of PDFs and textbooks. So I personally am a paper person, so I'll go through and highlight, but also underline asking questions in the margin. So when you go into class, you can automatically find where your source material is coming from. Your professor's going to want a page number. They're going to want a line. They, don't, they want to know that you're doing the reading. They want to know that you're staying engaged. So either you can look this up on your iPad or your Surface, or just use good old fashioned paper, um, just to be able to have that constantly. Before, I've always taken great notes with a highlighter using multiple colors for different content. I've even had a professor 
asked to borrow my piece of paper to show the class what it means to have a good highlighted sheet and it was kind of embarrassing but it really does make a great impression on a professor when they can see that you're putting in the work in your notes a bright colorful pdf or piece of, or an article shows that you're not just skimming the reading but you're actually reading the material for content so that's another pro tip to get you noticed in class bright highlighted paper so when you're going through and you're taking notes, I just take notes on a regular notebook like this, um, you're gonna wanna have date always there because nothing happens outside the context of history. So yes, you're studying art, but you also wanna have an idea of when wars are happening or when um, a different milestone is going on. So having your dates in the margin helps you to keep the information tracked as you go along, especially when it comes to review. What I like to do is after each week well, for a week, ich, goodness, after each week's worth of notes, I like to go through and um, just get an idea of what time frame I'm working with. So if you're doing, um, say, more antiquities or ancient art, you can say this is Paleolithic and this is Neolithic. So you can have those grouped or this is the Renaissance, this is the Baroque. So because your professor is going to want you to be able to partition art history in that way just because it's such a broad um, discipline in terms of timeline. Another great tip to kind of keep you engaged because sometimes your history classes can kind of go on and on, especially if it's material you're not interested in. Like personally, I'm really interested in contemporary art, but here I am in a lot of intro classes getting my footing in. So you can get a little boring and you can actually focus that into your notes. So I always like to doodle in my notes or try to um, do a quick sketch of an important piece. It helps you for your memory going back. So when you have small little images in your notes, you can go back and think, hmm, that was a Napoleon's, uh, Napoleon on a horse. Okay, who did that David? So you can go through and kind of figure that out and go along each time using a lot of arrows. Or when I was learning lithography, I made a little box chart. It just keeps your, your notes interesting, um, but also, a lot of times when I'm in a test, I can sometimes think about what image is associated with what word and what date. So always keep dates, images, and critical vocab um, in your notes and in a more creative way. It would be really helpful for you in the future. So as you're looking through my notes, you probably see these little stickies that are um, hanging out here. So that's my, not my next pro tip, sticky notes. So one, a lot of my books I get from the library and I don't own them, so I'm not able to highlight them. But also, two, the few books that I do own, there's so much content. You're going to be highlighting so many things. You're going to be writing in the margins. But how do you find that crucial content? Or how do you separate up the book for different time periods? The answer is sticky notes. So I'll go through with a sticky note and I'll put in an important image. So once I have the list of images that I need to know for an exam, I'll mark the image in the book. So then I'm able to go back as I'm reviewing my, my list of images and be able to get even more content on that image than what the professor provided in the book just to review. So being able to constantly go back to those pages or to be able to pick up quickly where you left off, sticky notes are crucial, especially when you're looking at that kind of content or if everything in the book kind of looks very similar. So this is another great book I had for one of my classes. It's Marian book on, on photography. So sometimes, you know, a lot of the early images can look a little bit similar just because uh, we had daguerreotypes early on and there was a lot of daguerreotypes featured. You can kind of just use that to have a sticky note there to help you find them right off the bat so you're not skipping through the pages looking for them. Or things for personal interest. So. Sometimes I'll be reading and I'll find something really interesting, but it doesn't really have to do with the topic. So if I'm studying um, like ancient Greek vases and I see one on Memnon and I'm like, wow, um, presence of black people in ancient Greek art, but I don't have time to focus on that right now because the exam's tomorrow, sticky note. So that's my next big tip when you're going through sticky notes, different colors. Um, those are the keys to finding out what to do. Also, I would really recommend going through and writing out all your key terms by hand. I know that can be daunting. I know it can take a long time, but key terms by hand. 
it's that rote memory that helps carry you through the test day. And my last pro tip is printing out the images. You want to be one with these images by the time you're ready to take the exam. You know where to find them in the book. You know exactly who made them, when, and what they fit into and why they're significant. Because it doesn't matter if you can kind of just say, oh, this is maybe this person. When an identification is off, it's off. Usually it's a all points or no points. And I always find um, IDs as an easy way to get points on the exam. You always know that they're gonna be there and it's an easy way just to get points. And if you study, you can always do that. Some of it could be harder. If you may not be a good essay writer, um, you may not understand the content as well, especially theory. But if you have those images memorized, you can always walk away with a good grade or a decent grade on test day. So my pro tip would be to print out your images in little handouts like this. So um, my school did not have free printing, but I was able to find um, a free printing place um, on campus. And what I did was I went in and printed out the PowerPoint. Now the key thing is don't print too many slides on one page. I know you're trying to save money or save paper, but when you have too many slides on one page, you really can't focus in on the individual images because there's so much there. I recommend either having four or six slides on a page um, and being able to really go in. So here I use um, different colors. And what I'll do is like say this is the Venus of Willendorf. I'll go in and I'll say Paleolithic Venus of Willendorf. And I'll go in and I'll put any information that the prophet said in class or anything from the book as well, any important quotes that you want to associate with the image. Um, and then you can use this to group that that period. So everything Paleolithic is going to be in this section. So it's better than just having it in your textbook. You have this as a handmade study guide for you to carry with you. Uh, and you can see how here I have caves, the Lascaux caves, but then I can see this is a detail of the cave and you can use different colors to circle. So here I've circled a man here in the bottom and you can kind of just make these as you go. And once you've finished a unit, you can put them into a binder and kind of have that as the front um, thumbnail page for your next section. Um, I carry these everywhere. It's so easy because I'll have maybe just one packet with one unit and my friends can help me or quiz me on it because all you have to do is see what you know about it. Um, I've taken them to campus jobs. Just by just having the images in front of you, you're studying in some capacity. So even if I'm not really able to study, I just want to keep reviewing them over and over again. I keep flipping the page, just looking at it thinking, okay, Gobi Tepe, like the Jericho Stone Tower. Just seeing that constantly helps you to get those images in your head. Art history is all about repetition and making sure that you know those images. And once you get a knack for it, you can quickly be memorizing over 30 images for an exam um, the most I've had recently has been 90. So it's always about planning ahead and feeling comfortable with the material. If you have any more questions, just shoot me um, a comment below and I'll get back to you on how to improve your study habits. I'm thinking about trying to go more digital, so if any of you guys have recommendations of whether I should go on iPad or Surface or maybe uh, a Sony digital document of some sort, um, I'm just looking to go for a more digital angle as I'm moving. So. Thanks guys.